Leveling to endgame is quite a daunting task, so I thought I'd make this video as a follow up to my beginner's leveling guide to help you get there as fast and painless as possible. I'll discuss how to effectively prepare your tune for leveling and provide a number of strategies that I've learned throughout the years that will accelerate your leveling journey. Before you start leveling your tune, you may want to consider if buying a tune is a better option for you. In my last video, I discussed the advantages and disadvantages of buying an account, so feel free to watch that if you're interested. Now, let's talk about how to improve your leveling gear and build, as well as the consumables that you use. Firstly, it's useful to know which damage type is the most effective in the area you're leveling in. Caramore Tunnels and Gelebron's Tower are of particular importance since you spend the majority of your time leveling in these areas. Poison damage is very effective in Caramore, so you should prioritize skills and gear that deal poison damage. For example, rogues should maximize the damage of their shadow strike and druids should focus on stinging swarms. Magic damage is the most effective damage type throughout Gelebron's Tower, with the exception of a couple of flaws. Specifically, the enemies in Alchemical Quarters are particularly weak to fire damage, and the enemies in Summoning Chambers are vulnerable to cold damage. Therefore, if you're a mage, it's wise to change your element depending on the floor you're leveling in. Most players already know what hot swapping is, but if you don't, it's basically a way of increasing the damage of your skills by adjusting your armor, weapon, or jewelry to suit the skill you're about to use. For the sake of brevity, I won't cover how to do this in detail, as there are already multiple hot swapping guides available on YouTube that you can check out. Essentially though, you place pieces of gear that correspond to each of your skills on your hotbar and switch between them depending on the skill you're about to cast. Hot swapping will make a big difference to your DPS while leveling, allowing you to farm experience faster. Try to choose gear that gives direct damage and skill points, as these will make the biggest difference to the damage of your skills. Hot swap gear can be difficult to get, especially before endgame, so I recommend joining a clan, if you haven't already, to help you with this. As a side note, you could also use your clan as a resource to access leveling partners and power leveling. For mages, druids, and warriors, the ideal stat distribution is very straightforward. Mages and druids should have enough vitality to sustain while leveling, while allocating the remaining points into focus. Warriors should do the same thing with vitality, but assign the remaining points into strength. Since quite a few ranger and rogue skills are dexterity based, their stat distributions are a bit more complicated. As with the other classes, you should only have enough vitality to sustain, but split the rest of your points into strength and dexterity instead. If you're looking for exact gear and build breakdowns for your class and level, I highly recommend checking out the Celtic Heroes forum, as there are plenty of player-made resources there to help you out. On top of using elixirs, it's also important to use food while leveling as it significantly increases your damage output. Your class determines which food is best for you. For mages and druids, truffled quail eggs or pavlova are the best food, but if you can't get those, monkfish fillet is a good alternative. You could also use spicy, minty, or honey fruit salad, depending on your element of choice. For rogues, rangers, and warriors, caviar or filet mignon are the best options. Otherwise, use barra breath or sunshine casserole. Of course, try to use exquisite or perfected food if you can get them. There are five leveling strategies in the game that I would recommend using. Two of them don't involve lixing, and the other three are ways of enhancing your lixing. My first recommendation is the easiest strategy, which is to do your daily quests. This involves doing six bounties plus the gladiator quest every day. You can also do the floor bosses in Gelebron's Tower for extra experience. 
Since these quests only give you so much experience, it's smart to do them in conjunction with some of the other strategies that I'll discuss. Quests aren't designed to be the main way of getting experience in this game, but there are a few exceptions that you can take advantage of. One such exception is the Otherworld questline, which gets you from around level 90 to level 130. The most notable repeatables from this questline are the Kelby Horn, Razor Claw, and Bridge Sentinel quests. I highly recommend dual logging a high level tune for these quests, if possible, as you'll have a much easier time. Even though this method is probably a bit slower than Lixing, it's still a great option, especially if you want to break from Lixing. The other quest that I recommend doing is the Corrupted Blossom repeatable in Corrupted Gardens. From what I could find, it takes around 4000 blossoms to get from 180 to 184, after which the experience declines. That being said, it's still viable to continue doing the quest until around level 190. This repeatable levels you faster than Lixing, especially if you buy the blossoms instead of farming them. As a bonus, you earn gold from doing the quest, which helps offset the expense of buying the blossoms. Let's move on to the strategies that increase your experience from Lixing, starting with a classic power leveling strategy. You can either get another player to power level you, or you can power level yourself. If you want to power level yourself, you need to be able to dual device and have a high level, preferably endgame, tune in addition to the tune you're trying to level. As you can see here, I'm using my endgame rogue to demonstrate. How it works is that your low level tune locks the mob and gets it to half health. And then once it's at half health, your high level tune comes in and finishes the mob off. And as you can see here, my druid gets the full amount of experience but only has to damage the mob to half health. By the way, the best class for power leveling is the mage due to their overpowered lures. Overall, this strategy is quite easy once you get the hang of it and definitely worth it as it can practically double your experience. The next strategy is called the 1 HP strategy and you need to have a high level tune that you can dual log to do it. In this clip I demonstrate how it works. My high level tune locks the mob and damages it so that it has as little health as possible while still surviving. Meanwhile, my low level toon auto attacks the mob. My high level toon then logs out, and as you can see the mob becomes unlocked but remains at a low amount of health, allowing my druid to easily finish it off. And as you can see here, I get the full amount of experience. I know this strategy sounds a bit complicated, but it's not too bad once you get the hang of it. I recommend using a mount with camouflage for this strategy, because otherwise the mobs will swarm your low level tune. If you want to go a step further, you can do the same process, but with multiple mobs at a time. For your high level tune, it's better to use a class that has strong auto attacks, like rogues, rangers or warriors, because it's easier to control their damage so you won't accidentally kill the mobs. This strategy isn't perfect, as you will accidentally kill the mobs with your high level tune occasionally due to a miscalculation or an unlucky critical strike or skill. Also, I wouldn't use damage over time skills on your high level tune as the damage from it is unpredictable. The main advantage of this strategy is that you don't have to worry about your low level tune being strong because your high level tune does all the heavy lifting. Unless your low level tune is very strong, the 1 HP strategy is more effective than power leveling. You should only use it in the Otherworld or Caramor, as your high level tune will struggle to carry you against higher level mobs. Last but not least is the strategy I call the Leech XP strategy, which involves grouping with players that are significantly higher level than you and standing near them to reap the experience they get from Lixing. As you can see here, my druid is around level 60, but I'm leveling with a level 150 plus ranger. This leveling method is effective from level 1 to level 160, 
and you only want to group with people who are leveling in Karamore. This is effective because high level mobs actually drop more experience than lower level mobs, so it makes sense to farm as high level mobs as possible. Another advantage of this strategy is that you can pretty much just stand there and collect experience without having to help kill the mobs, as your damage is negligible anyway. Of course though, people aren't going to be willing to let you join their Lixing group for free, as you're basically a parasite, taking some of their experience but contributing nothing to the group. Therefore, you'll most likely have to compensate them in the form of gold, lixes, or power leveling, whatever works for you. This is quite an underrated leveling strategy, as I don't see many people really doing this, but it's actually very overpowered, so I wanted to raise more awareness about it. To show how broken this strategy is, I was able to get from level 1 to level 50 within 15 minutes using this strategy on one of my tunes. That's all for my advanced leveling guide, I hope you learned something new, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.